Hi there everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster, um, but I'm also a teacher and I'm a father as well. Um, and right now I'm making a video, um, but this video isn't actually for most of you. Uh, I apologise for that. Um, it's actually a video for Ridley Scott, so if you're not Ridley Scott, then um, I'll see you next week. But um, do hit like before you leave, um, that would be helpful. And maybe share as well, because I have no idea how Ridley Scott's going to find out about this video, to be honest. So, um, so Ridley, um, now that the others have gone, um, I just wanted to talk to you, um, because... Facebook keeps on giving me um, some news stories about your latest film and uh, um, I mean, it's quite sensible because I'm into history and Facebook knows that so uh, historical epic is a good one and before I go any further I'd like to say I really really love your work um, genuinely uh, Gladiator is one of my favorite movies of all time um, just so much of that is kind of what got me into reenacting. There's scenes in there, the cavalry charges, awesome, really, really love it. And um, and to be honest, everything of yours that I've seen as well. Um, you are an incredible artist and filmmaker. So thank you for everything that you've done. Um, Back when I was a supply teacher, I occasionally did some um, work as an extra in movies. And I know how much work goes into making these films. You know, you put so much into them. And uh, um, it must be really upsetting when you don't get the results back that you wanted, which is why, of course, the news have been um, making a big deal about the Last Duel. Um, the film itself, I'm afraid I haven't seen it yet. Um, I need to wait until it comes out um, on a streaming service because um, basically the cinemas around here are really expensive. Um, and I haven't been to a cinema in years, uh, just basically because of that reason. Um, and I think there's probably a lot of people are feeling a similar way. They probably also wouldn't want to go, um, you know, the kind of person who would watch a historical epic, you know, a thoughtful historical epic from an artist like yourself are probably not the kind of people who would want to go on the opening weekend um, in the middle of a pandemic. And I think that's a very sensible thought as well. So don't take it, uh, don't take it to heart. Um, certainly most of what I've seen, most of the reviews have been really good. And I think it, you know, when more of us are given the option of seeing it, I think, uh, you know, in ways that we're comfortable watching it, I think we'll really enjoy it. Um, what I did want to give you some advice, Sir Ridley, and I know like you've achieved so much more than I ever will in my life, uh, I'm sure. So, take it with a pinch of salt but um there was some really good advice that i got as a teacher um and it was about who you're aiming it at you see when you're teaching a lesson uh to a group of people there are some people that will pay attention no matter how you do it and there are some people that won't uh and so you need to work your lesson plan to uh, target the people that might have particular needs. And then and then everyone will learn because the people that will learn no matter what are going to learn. And the people that need, have particular needs that you want to meet will also, um, will also learn. And I think this might be important for things like um, your historical movies. Um, because there's kind of a movement and it, it's probably coming from the studios and things like that. 
to um, kind of ignore historical accuracy. And certainly my friends take the mick out of me for it. Um, I doubt any of them are watching because I've told them to go away. But, you know, those friends of mine who aren't really into history as much as I am do take the mick out of me for, um, for wanting historical accuracy in films. But here's the thing. Um, if you were watching a film about filmmaking and in all of the scenes that showed a camera, they left the lens cap on, you probably wouldn't enjoy the film. Because that's, you know, that's something you know about and you care about. Um, and that's what it's like for those of us that really are into the history. And I think that's a growing number at the moment because, um, because my reenacting hobby is getting much bigger people are a lot more interested in even the details of things. And so when it comes down to it, um, I think paying a bit more attention to the details is going to help. Um, one of the images that went around in the build-up to the release of um, your latest film was the one of Matt Damon in the um, in the helmet, and you can see half his face, which I'm sure is um, probably something that someone from the studio wanted. You know, if you're spending money on Matt Damon, you want people to know that it's Matt Damon, um, which is fine. But if it switches off half of your target audience, I think it's probably not worth it. Um, one of the benefits, of course, is that there are actually helmets from the period that were in use in tournaments where you could see their faces or some of their faces and in fact you know that's the whole point of visors is that you can lift and lower them so you can have those things um now again i'm no expert in films but it seemed to work in a knight's tale you know everyone was able to know who uh heath ledger was because he had a suit of armor that was iconic to him. So everyone knows who he is and everyone knew who Count Adamar was. So it can be done, you know, you, the Adamar actually changes his armor three times in that movie, I don't know if you know that, but everyone still knows it was him because they used, um, used a particular etching on all of the different armors. Um, so yeah, I, I don't want to be, you know, teaching teaching you to suck eggs so Ridley and I genuinely I want you to know that I've kind of done this a bit tongue-in-cheek but um, I think we're just moving beyond the point of where historical authenticity and accuracy in films doesn't matter at all to a point where actually historical authenticity and accuracy would be a selling point and here's the thing is that if if you make a film where it is as historically accurate as you can make it without these big glaring errors, I know we can never get 100% authentic, but without these big gla glaring errors, then you're not turning anybody off, okay? The people that would have watched it with the inaccuracies will still watch it. They're not going to go, oh, this film is incredibly authentic. I'm not going to go and see it. But the same isn't true the other way around. If you make a film which has got big glaring inaccuracies, then the people that know about it will be switched off and they will really struggle to watch the film. And you might think that it doesn't matter, but it does. You know, let's go back to my illustration of the, um, the camera with the lens cap on. That would bug you all the way through the film if you watched something like that. And you would really struggle to give, even if everything else in that film was good, you would struggle to give it a good rating. And that's what it's like to be a, um, to be a medieval uh, historian and to have big glaring errors in the, um, in the films that we're watching. It's, it, it just makes you feel uncomfortable. It's like, wearing clothes that are a little bit too small or 
something like that, it just kind of rubs you up the wrong way. And it's difficult to watch something that rubs you up the wrong way for two hours. Well, anyway, um, thank you for listening, Sir Ridley. And I do genuinely um, want to watch um, The Last Duel and, and I'll be able to watch it um, soon, hopefully. Um, and I've been waiting to do a review of it on my channel until I've seen it properly because um, I really, I'm really excited about it. I love the book. Um, I love jousting and tournaments and this is, you know, a very famous tournament. Um, so I, I'm excited to see it, but I just wanted to give you this feedback and, and hopefully it will help. Well, um, normally at this point, Sir Ridley, I'd tell people to like, share and subscribe um, or visit me on Facebook or buy something from my spread shop. But um, as I've been talking to you for the past 10 minutes, there's no one else who's able to do those things. So um, I guess I'll just say bye and um, I hope your next film does really, really well. Bye.